Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a mini lecture on anal sac compaction in the canine, virtually, and also the feline. The kitty cat and also the dog, particularly the dog, are prone to actually accumulating material in their anal sacs. The anal sac is a scent gland, very much like the gland that's voluntarily expressed by a skunk when it scents its enemies, essentially. It is designed basically to scent the stool when the animal poos. I know this is disgusting, but this is very common. When the animal's poo goes through the backside, essentially, the internal and external anal sphincters are collapsed. In between those two is the anal sac, which discharges a liquidy kind of material onto the stool as a scent gland. Now, when that particular gland basically doesn't adequately discharge, the material accumulates in that anal sac, essentially, and it can get quite large. The consideration is thought that this just happens in small dogs, for instance, and other dogs, because it just does. That's not true. And also, if it gets um, um, uh, collected in there over a long enough period of time, it can be secondarily infected and end up with an abscess that comes right out the skin. And that's a disaster, too, essentially. Um, removal of the anal sac, essentially, is, has been done by surgeons such as myself for years and years and years until all of a sudden one of the surgery goes awry and you compromise the caudal rectal nerve. When you compromise that rectal nerve, caudal rectal nerve, which causes the anal sphincter to do this, then the anal sphincter just hangs open like that for about five or six months before it re essentially. Hope to heck it's going to re because the dog walks around the house and sausages drop out of its backside, essentially, usually in front of the television set, um, at night. And, of course, then you get a nasty call because that surgery's sequela or disaster after the surgery produced an infection that causes a peripheral neuropathy, which basically caused this problem. Now, we blame almost all these conditions, as you've noticed, on, on uh, neurological problems. And this is a neurological problem, but the interesting thing about it is something that veterinarians have really never enveloped or really never actually recognized. The anal sphincter ordinarily is at a normal tonus. However, if you elevate the sympathetic tonus because of pathology along the spinal cord or lack of neurological activity to the parasympathetic nervous system, the sphincter that holds the uh, uh, your, uh, this particular sac duct shut just inside the bladder, I'm sorry, just inside the rectum, basically never gets it loose enough to discharge when the animal poos. And so what happens is the animal accumulates this material in the lower colon or lower um, area in their backside and we end up with this problem. One of the things that we would do with these dogs, of course, is we would bring them in if they had problems and we would discharge their anal sacs. Now, groomers will have a tendency to discharge them by coming in and squeezing the outside of the dog's rump which uh, sometimes can discharge some of the anal sac material. What they need to do and also what you need to do as a veterinarian, also your staff needs to be learned how to do this, is you have to put a glove on, you have to get your finger in the backside, you have to basically milk that material out onto the, your finger if you're using your right hand. It'll come out, the left one will come out on this side, and then you put your thumb in there and the right one will come out on this side, and you basically massage that out of there. Unless you do that, you have not completely remove the material from the anal sphincter and uh, or from the anal sac essentially and so you can get a little bit out by squeezing the outside and feel that you've done a good job but you haven't because the majority of the material is still inside that so you have to put a glove on you have to go in there in the dog and in the cat and they're not going to like it okay so that's the long and the short of it when we um, had a sequela or it's post-operative infection one time um, and the animal didn't have a normal uh, urethral sphincter tonus for about five months and the client would call me up every every day and say the dog's still pooping in front of the TV set. Five months later, it finally came back. We, at that time, decided that we'd never do this surgery again, but rather just continually express these animals. And so we would do this, is we would basically have the animal come back every three weeks and routinely express their anal sacs. And after about for two or three months of that, the dog's anal sacs never filled up again. And we didn't understand why we're just keeping it empty. And then we realized that we were actually compressing the sacrotuberous ligament. Just inside this rectal area, essentially, that we would actually compress with our finger when we were expressing the anal sac was the sacrotuberous ligament. I guarantee you not one veterinarian on the planet knows what the sacrotuberous ligament is, nor do they know that it has is a direct input into the, into the pelvic nerve and the sacral plexus, which is parasympathetic to the rear end of the dog, which is causing the problem. Lack of parasympathetic impulse into the anal sphincter and also into the uh, um, the sphincter that that anal sac uh, anal sac sphincter is what causes this problem so by basically adjusting this animal in classic fashion and also adjusting through somatovisceral and we, by the way we show you this in module 4 quite easily you're able to actually rehabilitate parasympathetic input into the actual area of the uh, pelvic nerve or pelvic uh, 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 sacral plexus you can also do it with a laser 
you can do it with a laser essentially at the proper frequency, the frequency being 240. And you can put in and rehabilitate that this way too. Now you still have to empty the sack and keep the sack empty. But when we use this approach, we basically rehabilitate the underlying problem that's causing this condition and thereby allowing us to effectively basically rehabilitate the parasympathetic input into the anal sac sphincter, which is being slammed shut. And now it relaxes to the point where it functions normally and the poo when it goes through the canal basically discharges the anal sac like it's supposed to do that. Keep in mind you have to keep that anal sac empty for a, a significant period of time like two to three months and you have to apply this type of therapy and then the problem goes away and stays away essentially and so this is an acquired neurological imbalance sometimes called a, um, um, a sympathetic parasympathetic imbalance or a dysautonomia but uh, anal sac ab abscessation and anal sac impaction essentially is a very very common problem in veterinary medicine and essentially one that we can bypass too. The chances that you will probably see in a veterinary small animal veterinary practice at least 50 to 70 percent of the animals, that, dogs that, that come and cats, that come into your practice with impacted anal sacs is close to 60 to 70 percent. That means that these all 60 percent, uh, 60 to 70 percent of everything that walks through your door could have this kind of beneficial therapy essentially and it's justified and it bypasses this potential problem. We can do more good doing this than we can by vaccinating every animal that's not tied down. This has been a lecture on uh, anal sac abscessation, anal sac impaction, how we treat it, what causes it, and essentially I'd recommend that you consider going to the vomtech.com website and also the laser web site that is basically delineated here and you can get more information about how it is that we do this. Majority of the somatovisceral therapy that we deliver is based on uh, advanced courses that we treat with laser and also that we treat in module four of the VOM technology series, which you can see most of for free on these particular websites. Thank you for your attention and have a great day.